Here's a short demonstration of the Color Max with the 8mm spot size and four discrete output channels. The samples are paint samples mounted on a clear acrylic disc here and that I can rotate. Uh, the discrete outputs are shown on the LED status indicators here and the application software is used to program the sensor as well as see what the current color readings are from the RGB levels. So we're going to select channel 1 in the Dropbox. Select channel 1. Tolerance settings are currently 10% so we're just going to leave those there. And then we're going to go ahead and program channel 1 to match the yellow sample. Teach color max sensor. And now the yellow sample is recognized and activates channel 1 output. I've already programmed channel 2 for the white, channel 3 for the blue, and channel 4 for red. Now, the sensor does not require the software to be connected. All the settings are stored in the sensor, so whenever a blue object uh, is in the sensor's light spot, the discrete output for that channel will activate, indicating to your PLC. Uh, the dead color has been recognized. Again, back to white and back to yellow. This is a demonstration of the ColorMax 15X uh, sensor with an 8mm light spot. It's an example of the uh, light spot. The output from the sensor, since it can handle up to 15 channels, is in a hexadecimal format. Uh, when the LEDs, which uses the first four LEDs, when the four LEDs are on the right hand side, the outputs are low. When they move over to the left, that indicates a, a high output. The outputs for the channels are binary coded or hexadecimal format. Uh, so for example, when there's no match, they're all low, all zeros. When, all, when channel 15 is a match, then all the, all the first four LEDs would move over to the left side uh, to show an F. So let's start with, uh, I programmed eight of the channels for the uh, different color labels. So we'll start with label number one, indicates a match on channel one. Label number two, indicates a match on channel 2. Label 3 indicates a 1-1 one, one, or the binary code for 3. Label number 4 indicates a 1-0-0 zero, zero, or binary code for 4. Number 5 indicates a 1-0-1 one, one, binary code for 5. Label number 6 is a 1-1-0. One, one, Binary code for six. And number seven is a one 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 binary code for seven. And finally the last label, number eight, is a dark blue, indicates a one zero zero zero. The code for binary code for for eight. Sensor setup is quick and easy. The Windows application program, supplied with the sensor, provides an intuitive graphic user interface that allows the sensor settings to be adjusted and color recognition parameters to be established. The application window is organized into three frames. The sensor settings, color recognition channels, and current readings. The sensor settings frame provides selections for averaging, external triggering options, minimum output duration, or pulse stretching, and illumination level. The current readings frame provides real-time display of sensor measurements and recognized color match status. 
The color recognition frame provides controls for programming the match characteristics for specific color samples. The Color Max View provides two programmable color recognition channels. The channel drop box allows channel selection. Each color has a tolerance setting and the output may be selected as high or low when a match occurs. So now that we've completed an overview of the sensor and its controls, let's set up a typical color verification check for some sample containers. I've placed the acceptable sample directly between the color match view transmitter and receiver, and we'll look at the current reading in the application. We'll select channel 1, and then set the tolerances on each of the colors. We'll set red and green for both 50% and one of the low values for the red and the green channel, and we've adjusted the blue to read a 5% tolerance. We're going to select the match output to go high, and we will teach the color match channel. The sensor measures the sample, calculates the upper and lower limits for each color component, red, green, and blue, and then stores the results. The application window shows the results and the match status for channel 1, now showing a match. Now we'll place the darker sample in front of the sensor. You can see here that it is showing that it is not a match. And we'll place the lighter colored sample in front of the sensor. And again, you'll see that the channel 1 shows that it's not a match. Okay, now that we have the sensor programmed, let's check it out in a real world online application. We set the sensor up over a conveyor. <coughs> The red LED on the sensor indicates a match to the color that we programmed in earlier. The laser mark sensor detects the edge of a container while it is positioned properly in front of the sensor, signaling the sensor to take a color measurement and latch its output readings. So whenever the color, whenever the LED on the sensor is red, it indicates that the containers are matching the pre-programmed color. Whenever it turns green, it indicates the that the container does not match the pre-programmed color. So let's get the conveyor running and check out some of these containers. So you can see there are a number of containers that do not match the pre-programmed color and many containers that do. And occasionally when you see the light flash green, like it did just there, it indicates that the container does not meet the color criteria that we have established. Okay, here you can see the light green sample container. The light source is located here, the receiver is located on this side, and on the display on the monitor you can see the uh, RGB values for this sample. I'm going to slowly rotate it against a fixed stop, and you can see the slight variation in readings. And here is the dark sample, dark green. You can see there's a significant difference in the uh, RGB signal intensity.